with a Jesus ovation. Let's make welcome Bishop Dr. Mark Carrillo. My life will never, ever be the same again. In Jesus' name, I was born for this season. I am wired for this season. I am, I am anointed for this season. For this season. I, am I am ordained for this season. For this season. I, am I am highly favored for this season. For this season. I, am I am blessed for this season. For this, season. this is my season. And the devil can do nothing about it. Therefore, my life, my ministry, my businesses, my finances, my family will never, ever be the same again. In Jesus' name, give the Lord a shout of celebration. Come on, celebrate, 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 celebrate. Please remember, always remember, your celebration is a demonstration of your faith. Come on! Come on! Yes! Celebrate, celebrate, celebrate! You celebrate! A certain, a certain elderly man went to a meeting like this that was taking some time and the preacher was preaching and the man was born again he had been born again so he was there and the people in the village knew him when the altar call was made he went forward he was asked what do you want and he said i want my wife to be born again i want my wife to be saved and the preacher prayed because the preacher was teaching on faith and after the prayer this man started jumping and started running around and celebrating. Everybody was looking at him and wondering, what is going on? What has happened? And the man was jumping and celebrating. When he went home, the wife became even more manga, mangara. But after two weeks, the wife was passing by that where the meeting was, by the church where the meeting was, she heard some singing. She went at the door and peeped to see what was going on. And people was, uh, and people were just celebrating. And the preacher was preaching. Then while she's still peeping, the preacher made an altar call. And he said, if you want to give your life to Jesus, come forward. So she, wa she walked forward. And she gave her life to Jesus. And the people saw her. They said, this is the lady, the wife of that man. And the whole church went into celebration. Everybody was celebrating because this lady is born again and barely two weeks before we prayed for her. But the husband was just seated there. Everybody is celebrating, but the husband is just seated there. 
And one of the concerned brothers went and, why are you not celebrating? We prayed for your wife. She's born again. You are not celebrating. And she said, do you want to know? Give me the microphone. He was given the microphone. He stood there and he said, you are asking me why I'm not celebrating because my wife is born again. Did you see me two weeks ago? Did you see me two weeks ago? That is when my wife was born again. But for you, because you walk by sight, you are celebrating today. I want somebody who's celebrating my faith. Celebrate your miracle. Celebrate your miracle. Celebrate your miracle. Celebrate your miracle. Yes. So con conclude your celebration by saying, this is my day. Make the devil mad by declaring, this is my day. This is my season. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. I want to start by celebrating, celebrating the visionary of this mission. Reverend Julian Chula, I celebrate you. I salute you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We believe, we believe in this vision. Then we support this vision. That's why you see us here in the name of the Lord. I also celebrate all the pastors and the bishops and the ministers who are here. May the Lord richly bless you. I celebrate the international guests who have come into the land of Hakuna Matata. This is the land of Hakuna Matata. You are all our international guests. You are so, so, so very much welcome. I celebrate Mze Mamboleo, our elder. May the Lord richly bless you. Now, I know I do not have much time, and I do not need much time. I don't have much time, and I don't need much time. Because you do not need my whole sermon. You don't need, need my whole sermon. What you need is one word from the mouth of God into your spirit. The word that you will run with. And that word will bring transformation in your life. There are people here, there are people here whose lives will never be the same again. There are people here who are going to be celebrated here and internationally out of this conference. There are people here who are going to be so common in airports. So common in airports in this place that even the immigrations will recognize you from far. That the people from the immigration will be seeing you from far and saying, oh, you have come again. You have come today. What can we do for you? The air hostesses, the in -car, the cabin crew will be recognizes you, recognizing you before you go in. And for that to happen, you don't need the whole sermon. You need one word from God. I pray that tonight you would capture that one word. I pray that you would capture that one word. Because everybody needs somebody. Everybody needs somebody to go to the next level. David needed Jonathan to go to the next level. Joshua needed Moses to go to the next level. Paul needed Barnabas to go to the next level. Jesus needed John the Baptist to go to the next level. You need Julian Chula to go to the next level. And that is why he has labored and endeavored to bring all of us together 
Because according to the calendar of God, somebody is already listed to go to the next level. You came here not because you are invited. You came here because God has heard your prayers. You have been praying and praying and praying and you are expecting thunder, lightning, earthquake and body quick. That's all you are expecting. But God does not have to bring thunder. You don't even have to quick where you are. God had your prayer and this is how God works here on earth. God created the heavens and the earth. The earth he gave to mankind. The heavens he kept for himself. And he told men, this is yours. So he set up a system through which he will operate here on earth. And the way that God operates here on earth is through prayer. That when men prays, you create an avenue for God to manifest himself here on earth. When you don't pray, your road is bushy. So even your miracle does not find you. Because you have not been praying and prayer creates an avenue for God. Now there are men and women here. You came here because you have been praying. And God decided to answer your prayers. How does God answer prayers? Not by thunder and lightning always. He can use that. Number one, he is sovereign. God is, everybody say sovereign. Sovereign means he can do whatever he wants to do to whoever he chooses to do at whatever time he chooses without asking for permission. That is, our God is sovereign. So God, after hearing your prayers, puts a word in the heart of his servant. Either your pastor or the prophet or the guest speakers, God puts one word in that person. So that when they speak that word, you receive your answer. That's why I'm saying you do not need my whole sermon. What you need is that one word that will come from God that will fire you up. Many years ago, I was invited to a conference like this one in Akuru. Many, many times smaller than this. And the one who invited me is one of those preachers whom you do not trust. I know you, do, you, did, you know there are preachers you can't trust. And I, he wanted to, me to invite one of the guests to come and speak to our church. So I told him, no, I will come and listen to them. So me, I was going to check on the speaker to see if they can come, if they qualify according to my standards to come and preach in our small church in Akuru. I went there and I sat right at the back. I listened. I listened to the preacher and he read the scriptures. One of the scriptures he read was in Colossians chapter 1 from 25 through to 28. And it, it was talking about the mystery that was hid for many generations but has now been revealed to us which is Christ in you the hope of glory my eyes were opened up Christ in me Makariuki me Christ in me those were the years when we used to sing this chorus how did we sing it yeah yeah I did you you remember you remember that chorus yeah, yeah, I you, you, Mwamba. I realized, when my eyes were opened up, I realized, huh, we are saying he is in heaven, and yet he said, my father and I will come in and abide in you. And here, Paul is saying there was a mystery that was hid 
for many generations. Now it has been revealed to us. This mystery is Christ in me. Makariuki. Christ in me. That's all I got. Christ in me. So I, ah. Kumbe, I'm no longer a kikuyu. I realized I was no longer a kikuyu. You are no longer Mukamba. You are no longer Mjaluo. No, you are a carrier of the glory of God. You are a carrier of the very life of God. Ah, my life was changed. I went back to church. I invited these people to come and they preached. After they preached, I said, from today, I have quit working for God. I have quit working for God. From today, God and I make one team. God and I make one team. The unbeatable, unbogable, undefeatable team of Makarioki and God. Why? He lives in me. Somebody pray with me and say, My Father, my Father, my God. Open my eyes that I may see what you are saying to me now. I also want to, you to know that my wife is here. Please, uh, 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 can you just give Joyce a hand of uh, celebration? You want to turn around? Thank you. You see, like, uh, like Bishop Masinde, I already started. If you are waiting for me to start, I started quite some time ago. If your eyes would be opened up, and you know that Christ lives in you, your struggles will come to an end. And I can pr prophesy to men and women here, during this conference, your struggles are coming to an end. Yeah. You have struggled and struggled and struggled. Your struggles are coming to an end. Because you need somebody to tell you that. And I am the somebody who is telling you that. That you came here so that you could hear the voice of God. The God who lives in me. The God who lives in me. Saying to you, your struggles have come to an end. I normally tell people where I go. Where I preach. And pastor. Those people have learned to support me. When I preach, they say, Amen. 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 Yes, Amen. Bishop. Yes, Bishop. Amen. Even when I have no point. Yes, Amen. Even when I have no point, they say, Amen. Amen. Ask him. They, would, I, they say, Amen. Yes, Why? Because they sit there in faith. The point is coming. Amen. The point is coming. The point is coming. The point is coming. If it doesn't come on Sunday morning, Sunday night is coming. If it doesn't come Sunday night during the wedding, it's coming. If it doesn't come during the wedding, during the funeral, it is coming. So the point is coming. I said the point is coming. When I started praying about this conference and what I would talk to you about, I asked my son, what is the theme of the conference? The, this, I had seen the, the handbill and the poster. I had seen all the pictures, but I had not read. I just, oh, yeah, it's coming. It's coming. I asked my son, what is the theme? And he told me, united with Christ. United with Christ. So I asked God, God, what do I tell, what do I tell them when I go there? What do I say to the people? And I will give you the, word, the scripture that God put in my spirit can like it or not like it, it's not between me and you, it's between you and God because he's the one who gave me the scripture because the scripture he gave me was in 1 Corinthians chapter number 11 and verse number 30 
First Corinthians chapter 11, verse number 30. Can we read out all of us? For this cause, many are and, and among you and many for this cause, for this reason. In other words, there is a reason why we have so many people in the church weak. We have so many people in the church sickly. And we have so many people in the church dying. And if we do not know that reason, we will keep walking in weakness, sickness, and death. You start a business, it dies. There are so many people, so many believers who are running very weak businesses. There are so many believers who are running very weak families. There are believers who are struggling with dead visions. Struggling with dead dreams. Struggling with dead ideas. And you are wondering, what shall I do? You have fasted. You give sacrifices. You do everything you are told to do. You are told, run from there, come here. You run. You are told, jump seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you stand there. Nothing happening. But there is a reason. If we do not know this reason, we will keep struggling and keep going round. You have been delivered from the spirit of stagnation, but you are still st stagnant. You have been prayed for, and the spirit of delay has been broken out of your life. You are still delayed. Why? Hosea 4 and verse number 6, what does it say? My people perish for lack of knowledge. Well, Jesus said in John 8, 32, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So if we do not understand this reason, we will keep struggling yes, until Jesus comes. Yes, Going to heaven, you will go. Because Jesus said, I am the way. But before you go, you are going to struggle here. But I came to tell you tonight, the days of your struggles are over. I came to tell somebody here, the days of your struggles are over. So we need to ask ourselves, what is this reason? What is this reason that is keeping us in weakness, sickness, and death? What is this weakness? Look at verse number 29. Verse number 29 says, He that... Where? First Corinthians 11, 29. I'm looking for you. You are, you, are, you are glad I can't see you. Okay. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself. Everybody read. Not... What is the cause? Not designing the Lord's body. When we do not design the Lord's body, what happens? We live in weakness, sickness, and death. But Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you are we together? Yes, 
And I started looking at that word designing. And you can look for you can look for the definition of the meaning. But one of the meanings that I got was designing means understanding, perceiving, knowing, getting to a knowing. So for us to quit weakness and diseases and death of whatever we want to do, we need to design. We need to understand. We need to discriminate the purpose. When we understand Understanding will bring you to a position of knowledge. Faith will bring you to a position of knowledge. When you left home, whatever time you left home, you left home having this confidence, believing, I am going to the Rema Feast. And you walked knowing I am going to Rema Feast. Now, nobody here believes you are going to Rema Feast. You know that you know that you are already in Rema Feast. When you came here, you sat on that chair believing that that chair is going to hold your weight. You did not check on the legs first. Is any one of them broken? And then you sat after checking. No. You sat there believing it's going to hold your weight. Now, you are not believing that you are seated. You know you are seated. So what I... My... Purpose tonight is to walk with you so that you can come with me to a place of knowledge that you may know what has already been given to you, what God has already done. And what God has already done is no longer doable because it is done. Somebody pray with me and say, My Father, my Father, my God, open my eyes that I may see what you are saying to me now in Jesus' name. So designing or understanding will bring you to a position of knowledge. And that's where you will, I want to go. Paul says, I know whom I have believed. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, let this be known to you, O King Nebuchadnezzar. We are not going to bow. Because we know our God. Our God is well able to deliver us. We know. I want you to come to a point of, I know whom I have believed. I know when I pray, my prayers are answered. You know, I've looked in my life, Pastor T, and I have actually seen, no, you see it. I know when I bless people, they get blessed. Amen. I have seen that. When I bless people, people get blessed. Whether they like it or not, they are blessed. So whether you like it or not, you will be blessed. Whether you like it or not, you will be blessed. Because that is part of my life. So we need to find out this body of Christ not designing the Lord's body, not bodies, 
the Lord's body. There comes our unity. That we are one body. Bishop Masinde told us to tigisa kidogo. Sema one body. Sema one body. One baptism. One spirit. That's who we are. Now, to discern or to understand the Lord's body, please walk with me, to discern or understand the Lord's body, you need to know that first of all, the body of Jesus is twofold. When he talks about the Lord's body, it's twofold. Number one, the spiritual body of Jesus Number two, the physical body of Jesus. Now let's look at the spiritual very briefly, then we come to the physical. The spiritual body of Jesus is called the ecclesia. It is the ecclesia. It is one body. When we talk of Rema feast, we are talking of the ecclesia. Bishop Masinde has told you that for now I am the general overseer deliverance church with over 2,500 congregations in, in this nation and others in Zambia, Mozambique and other places. But I want you to know that deliverance church is not the way. It is man-made. It was made by a man called Apostle Joe Kyle. Ruach Ministry is man-made. Made by a man called Julian Chula. Even you as tea is man-made. Even you, you as is man-made. Even you Esther, it is man-made. They are all man-made. In heaven, there is no corner for deliverance church. You know, we have got to come out of some traditions that have been built in us and destroy them. What, in Akuru, when we were, as we were growing up as a small church, I told the youth, we are going to preach everywhere in this Nakuru. So I told them, if you hear there is a funeral in Matanga, Matanga, funeral, the, the service is bef uh, before the burial. Every, uh, the whole week, you, we, you tell me we go there. So we visit, went to so many, so many places where the, someone was dead. And you know, in that meeting, everybody's given an opportunity. And I told my guys, when they give you an opportunity, your work is to preach two minutes, make an altar call, pray for the people five minutes, you are gone. And then we go to the next one. So I went to one of them and they said, you know, all churches are trusses. Meitreros. All churches, you remember that house, that round house in the village? And there are those uh, trusses that go and meet at the top. And they said, all churches are meitreros. They all meet at a place called Gashombere. At the top, that's where they meet. So they were saying, Every church is the way to heaven. And they said, even Pastor Mark is here. Pastor Mark, now you come and greet the people. I stood up and said, I am the pastor of Deliverance Church in Nakuru. But I want you to know, deliverance is not, is not the way. I told them, my mother is an elder in the Presbyterian Church. But I want you to know, the Presbyterian is not the way. I told them, my brother is also an elder in another Presbyterian Church. But I want you to know, he also knows that Presbyterian Church is not the way. I told them, Jesus said, I am the, the way. The is called a definite article in English. The definite article, meaning there is no other. There is no other. And Jesus said, I am the way. 
So, you are church. It's not taking you to heaven. Jesus is the way. And there are not two ways. There is only one way. The man, Jesus Christ. So when you capture that, now you look, we are looking at the Lord's body. And we have said it is twofold. We are looking at the spiritual. And this spiritual body has a legal door, a legal entrance. Jesus said, if anyone does not come in by the door, the same is a thief and a robber. So the legal entrance into this spiritual body of Jesus is only one. You must be born again. Finished. Don't tell me you are baptized. Don't tell me you sing in the choir. Don't tell me you are the one who has built that, that, that church hall. You must be born again. That is the legal entrance into the body of Jesus Christ. For this reason, many are weak, sick, and die. For not understanding the Lord's body. To operate here on earth, there is only one legal entrance. To operate here on earth, there is one legal entrance. You must be born by your mother. That is why Jesus had to be born by Mary. So that he can legally operate here on earth. And as long as somebody has come in legally, you have no right to disqualify them. For this reason, many are weak, sick, and sleep for not designing the Lord's body. Because many of us are very good and very quick at disqualifying others in the body. Because I don't sing like you. You may not like me, but I am here legally. I don't pray like you, but I am here. I came in by the door. You may not like the way I, I, the way I, I dress, but I am here. You may not like the name of my church, but I am here. You may not even like the way I started because I split. <laughs> but I am here legally. When you understand, when you come to a point of knowledge that you are in the body legally, there is no witch, no wizard, no devil will shake you. No devil will intimidate you. If you are here legally, you are intimidatable. Has anybody heard what I said? Because you are here legally, you are in un... Let's use this one which we understand. Unbogable. Let's use the one we understand. You are unbogable. Do we have anyone who is in this body legally? Yes. Declare yes. yes. I am unbogable. Okay. You know the Bible says from the days of John the Baptist until now the kingdom of heaven suffereth. 
violence and the violent take it by force. Do we have people who want to take it by force? Declare, I am unbroken. I am un. And say it. And intimidate Are you hearing me? Kuna watu hapa. There are people here. There are some demons that have been disturbing your family. Now listen to me. Because if you are waiting for me to shake a shake that I, when I'm prophesying, I will not shake a shake. There are people here. Your family has been disturbed by powers, by witches who have, come in, who have been coming in the night to go around your house, to go around your chamber, to finish you. I came to say to you, from today, from this day, from this day, those demons will never see them again. Those witches will never come to you again. They will be telling others, that one we know. You remember in Ephesus, in Ephesus, the sons of Sceva, when they took this uh, uh, possessed guy to a house, and they said, come out in the name of Jesus. He asked, which one? Which one? And they asked, other, what is, what they asked uh, asking one another, what is the other name? What, was, what is his other name? Nobody could remember. Then they said, the one who Paul preaches. The demon said, wait, 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 wait. If you're talking of the one Paul preaches, Paul, we know. That one is dangerous. We don't play around with that one. Jesus, we know. We don't play with that. They will say, Anyango, I know. They will say, Akinyi, I know. They will say, Karaoke, I know. They will say, Waizerero, I know. They will say, Julian, I know. They will say, Nafula, I know. They will say, Olesemi, I know. That one I don't play around with. Those, those witches that have been playing around with your job, sitting on your, post, on your promotion, sitting on your promotion, year in, year out. Today, their position has been dismantled. They are dismantled in Jesus' name. Somebody say yes. yes. Huh? Somebody say my life will never, ever be the same again. In Jesus' name. Why will your life never be the same again? Because you design the Lord's body. You understand the Lord's body. There's a lot we could say about the spiritual body, but let's put that aside. Remember I said it's twofold. So remember that? I said the body is twofold. Let's put that aside. Now, the spiritual, we have seen the spiritual. There is so much that I have not said, but let's come to the physical. The physical body of Jesus Christ. This is the body that walked the streets of Galilee. This is the body that walked along the Jericho Highway. This is the body that met with blind but Myers. This is the body that met the woman with an issue of blood. The physical body of Jesus, which was the license for him to operate here on earth legally. Remember, he was God and man. So to operate here on earth, he needed a body which we must understand. We must discern. When we discern, your life shall be transformed. Your business shall be transformed. So what can we see from the physical body of Jesus? This is the body that hung on the tree and said, it is finished. When we understand this body, then we will understand it is finished. If we don't understand or discern, perceive this body, we will just be saying it is finished. 
It is finished. And nothing is finished. Because you do not understand. Because understanding will bring you to a place of knowledge. Remember what Paul is praying for the church in Ephesus. In Ephesians chapter 1. From verse number 15, he tells, he tells them this. Ever since I heard of your faith, I cease not to pray for you or to make mention of you in my prayers. And this is how I pray for you. That God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge, in the in the knowledge of him. Look at verse number 18. He says in verse number 18 that the eyes of your understanding might be enlightened, might be opened up. That your eyes be opened up. Understanding brings you to the opening comes as a result of the opening up of your eyes. So when your eyes are open to understand the physical body of Jesus, your life will never be the same again. That's I realize I've got to move fast. I can tell you that I'm going to tell you that I'm going to tell you Are we, are we together? Are, are we together? This is the body which Isaiah saw. The body is earthly. The body is earthly. So it deals with things here on it deals with things here on earth. It is the body by which the foundation of your salvation was laid. And Paul declares and says, there is no other foundation that can be laid other than that which is already laid, which is Christ Jesus. Now, when we talk about, of, about a foundation, we are talking about cement, kokoto, water, S and sand zina korowa is mixed and the concrete comes up um, that's what that's what we are talking about now when we are talking about our foundation the foundation which is already laid which is christ jesus this is a foundation not mixed with the kokoto not mixed with the cement but this is a, a, a foundation that is mixed with water the blood and the dirt why because my teacher told me you are a one third, two thirds water, and one third that. I don't know whether you were in class when the teacher was teaching that. <laughs> At least I was not looking out when the teacher taught that. That's one third is water, another one third is, uh, uh, is two thirds. Two thirds, two thirds is water, and one third is that. That's what they told me. So what do we see? We see the body of Jesus, Jesus in his physical body, telling his disciples, the hour has, the hour, the hour has come. He told his mother, my time is not yet. Now he's telling the disciples, the hour has come. The time I was waiting for has come. Let's go. And they went out to pray. They went to get some money. And when they went to get some money, he disciples, you guys pray here. Let me go and pray a little bit further. And they go a little bit further and they are praying. And Jesus goes praying. When he is praying, the agony of what he's going through is so intense that he starts sweating. Water is coming out of him. As he prays, that water turns into blood. The water drops are hitting the ground. The blood is hitting the ground. What is happening? A foundation of our salvation is being made. And in the prayer of Jesus, he says, 
Father, if only this cup would pass from me, if this cup would pass from me, and remember what he has said, Jesus said, I do what I see my father do. At the grave of Lazarus, what did he say? Father, I thank you because you always hear me. Now, at Great Gethsemane, he is praying and saying, if this cup would pass from me, does God hear or does God not hear? See, God had him. But Jesus did not stop there. He says, nevertheless, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. What does that mean? That means Jesus has overcome what made Adam sin against God. Because Adam knew the will of God. The will of God was don't eat of that tree. The day you eat it, you shall surely die. But when the serpent came and gave it the, the fruit, Adam looked at it, he saw it's good, he said, ah, tamusana, let her catch up. He did, uh, he acted against God's will. God's will was don't eat of that tree. What is the will of the Father in Gethsemane? You have got to drink from this cup. What is the will of Jesus? If this cup would pass from me, but Jesus does not stop there. He says, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. What does that mean? That means the blood, the sweat hitting the ground. There is deliverance. There is a covenant. Deliverance from our self will. That you can say, it is no longer I that lives, but Christ lives in me. I am no longer a kikuyu. I no longer own anything. Whatever I have belongs to the master. Whatever I do is to the glory of God. There's, there's a lot we could say there, but we've got to move a little bit ahead so I don't leave you hanging. They capture him and they take him to Pilate's court. What happens when they take him to Pilate's court? They tie him to a post. When they tied him to a post, the, the Roman soldier on duty, the Roman soldier on duty that night gets the Roman whip. And as he gets the Roman whip, they have stripped him of his clothes. And they have tied him to a post. And the Roman soldier is looking for food for his family. So he is doing what he's supposed to be doing. And he swings the musharisha. Hey, pop! Isaiah the prophet had seen this about 500 years before. And Isaiah had said, by whose stripes we are healed. Isaiah had seen the body of Jesus being broken, the blood oozing from his back and hitting the ground. The foundation is being mixed. And it said, by whose stripes we are healed. At the same time, the angel in heaven on duty that night is there with a list. He's there with a list and a pen. And in that list, he has written all the sicknesses and diseases. Somebody told me many years ago that the medical world proved that there are 39 major diseases. There are many others, but all others are associated to the 39. And Jesus is whipped how many stripes? 39 stripes. Is it a coincidence? Not a coincidence. The angel on duty is there. 
He is there with a pen and a paper. The Roman soldier who swings around, and they say, one, the angel in heaven says, malaria, gone. He takes again, he says, two, and the angel says, sugar diabetes, gone. He takes another one, the angel on duty says, pneumonia, gone. And he's sticking all of them until the 39 of them are gone, including yours. So the blood was shed, the body was broken for your healing. For this reason, many are weak, sick, and sleep. Why? They do not understand the Lord's body. Somebody pray with me and say, my father, my father, my God. Open my eyes that I may see what you are saying to me. Let me tell you, my friend, there is nothing impossible. Once you understand this, you will look at that malaria. You will look at that sickness. The sickness, where are you trying to go? In my body. Not here. Not in this body. Not in this body. This is the temple of the Holy Ghost. If I was in Akuru, I, have, I would have said, Utonya mwero wa kwane kanyaga. Kwingi andani ya mwini yangu ni kanyaga. Ni... Yeah, trespass. That sickness in your body is a trespass. It is there illegally. It is waiting for you to know that you may tear it out. See somebody, somebody just knocks him out. Look at that, thing, that sickness. We, you are even booked for an operation. You are booked for an operation next week on Thursday. You are booked for an operation uh, this coming week on Thursday. Now, right there where you are, whether you are here or in this, watch, watching through the social media, declare out. Just declare out. You know, one mama, one mama came to me and she brought her son. Her son had left school on Friday. He couldn't stand straight because of uh, stomach pain. So on, the, the, the mother tried to give him pain, kill her to give him uh, water, nothing. Saturday morning, the mother decided to take him to a doctor in a cool. And then she remembered, I've been going to Bible study. And the, bishop, the pastor has been saying, out, out, out. She, she called my house. I was not in the house. Mama Junior picked the phone. Hello, is the pastor in? No, he is not. Tell him I want to see him. He, she, after one hour, she called again. I was not in the house. After another hour, she called again. I had just come. Uh, and Joyce had told me, uh, Mrs. Kamau has, is, is, has, has called two times. And as soon as I got in, she called. Hello. I said, Bishop, are you in, are you in your uh, pastor? Are you in the house? I said, yes. I want to see you now, 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 now. She was one of those ladies who know how to greet their pastor. How to, with a Pentecostal handshake. You know a Pentecostal handshake? The handshake that leaves something in the hands of the pastor. That's called a Pentecostal handshake. So I knew this Saturday we are going to eat meat because a Pentecostal handshake is, is coming. So she comes and comes into the house and she doesn't even sit, opens up her, her handbag. What am I doing in the inside? Oh, what in, in the inside, I'm singing revival songs. Instead of producing anything valuable, she produces a paper, gives me a paper. And I look at the paper, it's a cheat from the doctor. What does it say? This boy should be, ta should be taken to Annex Hospital. Annex of War Memorial, I think Annex of War, War Memorial. Should be taken to War Memorial Hospital and be prepared for an operation that same day at 3.30. This is about 12 noon. And I asked her, what do you want? She said, Pastor, you have been praying for, you have been telling us that by the stripes of Jesus we were healed. I want you to pray for my son. I said, sure enough, where is he? He is in the car, bring him. The boy walked into my house like this, bent like this. And I, he sat there and I told him what I am telling you. And I told him we are going to pray. And we prayed. Then, the, then I told the mother, the boy is healed. The mother told me, you know I have a challenge because my husband is not born again. If I take the doctor's sheet to him, and then I told him we prayed with Pastor Mark. He would think something is wrong here. So what are we going to do? 
I said, you go back to the same doctor. Let him examine the boy. And the doctor will say there is nothing wrong. It was a misdiagnosis. And she went, she went away. She went to the doctor's place. The doctor was not there. She decided to go to another doctor. This other doctor checked on the boy. And the doctor said, there is nothing wrong with this boy's appendix. He is, complete, he is completely whole. Then, the, 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 this, this doctor said, because this other doctor had said, you go to a pediatrician. Let a pediatrician examine the boy. They went to the pediatrician in, in town. And the pediatrician examined the boy. And he wrote on the back and said, I have this day at this time examined this boy. And I hereby certify nothing is wrong with his appendix. Somebody say, out. Some of every sickness hiding in my body. Your time is over. Your time is over. Your time is over. Go. 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 In Jesus' name. And so shall it be. I said, and so shall it be. Now, don't wait to feel some kunyeriris. Don't wait to feel tree, tree, tree. Ah, it is done by the authority of the word. Why? By the stripes of Jesus Christ, you are healed. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Therefore, you are not in the lineage of cancer. The cancer that killed your mother is not your cancer. The cancer that killed your father is not your cancer. The cancer of failure is not your cancer. Okay. Where are we? We are in Pilate's court. You remember where we are? We are in Pilate's court. And the Roman soldier has finished his work. There is another soldier who wants to entertain the people and make fun of this man because he was called the king of the Jews. Who is a king? Who, which king has no crown? So he runs outside and he cuts some thorns. Cuts some thorns. He prepares a crown of thorns. And he comes, entertaining everybody, entertaining everyone. And he, what does he do? Chuburyu. He puts it on the head. The thorns pierce the head. What comes out? The blood comes out. As the blood comes out, it's hitting the ground. What is this? What are thorns? Thorns. If you read in Genesis, Genesis three, verse number eighteen, thorns and thistles came as a result of the curse. In Eden, there were no thorns. But once Adam sinned, that's when thorns came up. To show Adam, you have been living in the land of abundance. Now, you have to struggle. Thorns came to prevent the power Adam from going, from going on, from succeeding. So thorns are a sign of poverty. They are a curse of poverty. Poverty. This soldier has no idea what he is doing. He is just entertaining people. But in the plan of God, in the plan of God, man is being delivered from the curse of poverty. I came to say to somebody, tonight you are delivered from the curse of poverty by discerning the Lord's body. You are delivered from the curse of poverty by designing the Lord's body. May the wisdom to make riches come to you. May the wisdom of, of wealth come upon you. May the wisdom to succeed in business come upon you. May you overtake your competitors. May you receive new ideas. So the crown of thorns is to deliver us from the curse of poverty. Therefore, we have the boldness to declare, let the poor say, I am. Why? Because I understand the Lord's body. I design the Lord's body. I know what has happened. As far as God is concerned, it's a done deal. 
But what do we do? Why more than Jehovah Gaiba is a Kadai Ibrahimu? Oh, remember me, God. You know how I have struggled. We stop crying. Take your position, Boana. Take your position. Make use of this time. May millionaires and billionaires be birthed out of this conference. May the billionaire in you arise. May the millionaire in you arise. Some of you here, you are going to handle money you have never handled. You are going to handle money you have never handled. Because you understand the Lord's body. Our God is not limited. Our God is not limited in resources. He has it in abundance. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And you are a son. Say, I'm a son. I'm not a slave. Come on, say, I'm not a slave. I am a son. What is that that they say? Uh, this uh, the, the, the Cheza, come on, Cheza, come on. Could have you come here? Come on, come on. Come on. Cheza, come on. Hey, Cheza, come on. Hey, Cheza, Cheza, come on. Hey, Cheza, come on. We, you're the son of the king. The anointing is the anointing in you is an anointing for international business. May you reign in international business. May you own planes. May you own your own cargo plane, passenger plane. May you own businesses. May you own banks. Because you have been delivered from the curse of poverty. Now, when you are, once you are delivered, once you are delivered from the curse of poverty, you are, you, your tithe is no longer a debatable issue. You are giving is not a debatable issue. It doesn't matter who you listen to on the social media or on TV. You understand the aim is not discerning the Lord's body. When you discern the Lord's body, you are no longer uh, you're depending on the opinions of other people. You are depending on the word of God. There's an anointing released in this place. There's an anointing released in this place for millionaires and billionaires. Billionaires, billionaires here. There is wisdom here uh, that is being released for international businesses that you will be tithing with in dollars. You will be giving in dollars. You will give in sterling pounds. If that is you, say yes. The body of Jesus was broken. So that you can be delivered from the curse of poverty by the thorns. Go to Golgotha. He's put on the cross and the nails pierce his hands and his feet. What happens? The blood comes out. What is going on? As the blood hits the earth, Jesus is hanging there on the cross. What does he say? Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them. Then, what does that mean? I am forgiven. You are forgiven. And because you are forgiven, you cannot afford, you cannot afford to carry anybody in unforgiveness. You cannot afford to carry other believers in unforgiveness. Because you are forgiven, you forgive unconditionally. There are about, about 50 people here. 50 people you have been saying, me, I will never forgive that one. I will never forgive. I will, that one we will meet. Uh, that one they can, you are inviting stomach ulcers. In fact, there are others here. You have been going to the hospital. The doctor has been telling you you are not sick. You are insisting you are sick because you are feeling sick. And it's just because you are carrying bitterness. Put that bitterness away. Jesus said, Father, forgive them. The ability to forgive is in you. Oh, Bishop, me, I cannot forgive my mother. My mother, hey, whatever she did to me, I can't. 
That one I can't. I try to forget. I don't have any bitterness, but I can't forget. Where you forgive that man, forgive your mother, and most of all, forgive yourself. Forgive yourself. You did some stupid mistakes, and they have landed you where you are. Forgive yourself and move forward. When you forgive yourself, you bring in the deliverance of God that you are not carrying any bitterness. Now, you, I, have to, I have to stop there. And if I may say like my general secretary and my relative, it's good for me to stop so I can be invited again. If I finish everything, I will never be invited again. So I stop there. And I stop by saying, for you, for you to access this word, for you to receive this word and to benefit from this word, you have got to do what you have never done before. Bishop Masinde said, change. Change. Purpose. There are things which are going to change in my life. There are things which have changed from now on. And I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you. Because one of the problems that we are having in the church today is the problem of poverty. Is the problem of poverty. What, what, is, what, what was that we learned in school? They, what they call, did they call them similes? Similes. As tall as a giraffe. As fat as a pig. As poor as a church mouse. That has got to change. That has got to change. That was cooked to make the church think poor. And you are not poor. I said you are not poor. Somebody with the holy anger lift up and declare, I am, I am not poor. Poverty is not my portion. Now put your finger like this. Put your finger like this and declare. Poverty, poverty, poverty. Poverty, poverty, poverty. Hear the word of the Lord. You are not my portion. In the name of Jesus Christ. From this day. I refuse. Poverty mentality. Sickness mentality. Sickness mentality. Slavery, mentality. Slavery mentality. I am free. I am free. Now, if you are free and you know you are free, give the Lord a shout of celebration. Come on. Come on. Without action is, I didn't hear you, faith without action is, for this reason many are weak from today. The weakness of your business is broken. The weakness in your life is broken. I want to ask you to do what you have never done before. I want to ask you to give an offering tonight, now, that you have never given before. An offering that you have never given before. Say, this is what I am giving now. And many of us have our, 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 our phones with us. You have your phone with you. What is, what is, the, what is the till number? It, it's, come, it's, it's right there. And we were told that Safaricom has increased. What is that? What is that? What is that they increased? The capacity. Six times. So we can all give at once. 
We can all give at once. So you, you get that. This is when you decide you can transfer from your account to the church account right there where you are. An offering you have never given before because you are saying this is the offering that I will remember forever. This is the offering that made me cross over, over to the other side. This is the offering that made me jump above the river of poverty. This is the offering that has made me go to the next level. So please go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead and do that. Go ahead and do that. Technology has helped us. But there are also those of you who have, who have cash. But I know when we carry cash, you, don't, you carry cash just for matatu and uh, little, little things. I want, don't just give at random. Think, 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 think. Think. One lady came and told me, Bishop, this word you are teaching, it is working. My business has prospered. She was selling curios, and she sold them until she came, and, she came and told me. Is that mine or yours? She, 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 came, she came and told me, you know, God has, uh, has blessed me. God has blessed me. Yeah. Now, I am no longer selling curios. I am now a distributor. I have my own role from a curio seller to a distributor. Then she told me, and Bishop, I see you are buying a role for the gospel. I will give you one million. And next, the following week on Wednesday, it was in the bank account. I didn't solicit for it. But she saw what the Lord has done. Some of you here, you know, when you buy a ticket, you use the dollar. When you go to Amsterdam, you use the dollar. Or the euro. So think outside the box. Don't think in Kenya shillings. Think international as you give your offering right now in the name of Jesus. So there are those of you who are destined to give in millions. Five million is not too much. You can give five million without sweating on the finger or sweating on the loose. You just, you just put your pa 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 comma, pa 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 comma, and it, and it goes into the account straight away. And you don't even have to announce to your neighbor that you see what I've given, you see what I've given. Because you're exercising your own faith. Our Father and our God, I have declared to your people that which you put in my spirit. Lord, I said it in simplicity that everyone would understand. I pray that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you would seal this word. And as your, as your people seal the word with their offering, Lord, you seal this word with signs and wonders in their lives. That those who came here sick are going home healed. Those who represented relatives and friends who are sick at home, they will find them whole because we have declared your word and sent your word to heal them wherever they are for your glory. That your people are set free from say of will. It is your will now, Lord. Glorify your name, Jehovah, because I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Those of you who are giving cash, I think there are some, there are some cash, cash, cash points in the place. Just go ahead to those places. The ashes will show you where. Will lift, if you have your envelope and you need to take it where it's supposed to be, please do that. Do that. Ashes help, help us. Just lift up those buckets so that the people can, the people can see the buckets and then they will come, they will, they will come and, and give. Those with the envelopes, please let's just go, go ahead. Thank you so much. May the Lord richly bless you. May you remember. May you flourish. May your business flourish. May you be celebrated. May you walk in victory. May you walk in perfect health. 
May sicknesses and diseases never come to your house again. May failure and fear never come to your house anymore in the name of Jesus Christ. And may you be celebrated wherever you go to the glory of God. And the church said... And the church said... Yeah.